Hey, hope you're doing well. In today's Five Minutes to Better Filmmaking and Photography, we're talking about foreground. Why you would want to use foreground to create depth, to add interest, and to create a sense of motion and scale. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Jake, and I create content for solo creators on the go. People like me who work by themselves on the go, create content for here on YouTube or small commercial projects. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska, and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment. In today's Friday, Five Minutes to Better Filmmaking Photography, we're talking about foreground and the way that you can use foreground to create a more dynamic image, a more interesting image, and in general, a more visually pleasing image. Now, there's a lot of ways you can use foreground, and this is going to be by no means an exhaustive list of ways to use foreground, but it is something to get you started so that when you go out today or tomorrow, you can start trying to use foreground to create a little bit better imaging for yourself using your photo camera, your video camera, or your drone. So to start off with, there are a couple of different ways I want to talk about using foreground. One is using foreground to put the subject, the thing that you want people to focus on in the frame and cause people to focus on that. And that's largely controlled by focus, but a little bit by placement too. And the other is giving a sense of scale. The way you use sense of scale is when you use a shallower depth of field or something where you're shooting through something that is out of focus, or you have things that are nearby you and the camera that are out of focus, but then a little way away, you have the subject that you wanna be in focus and that gives you a sense of distance and a sense of scale. So for example, in these photos here, the subject is what's in the foreground. So you can see clearly here, this kind of bullet hole riddled piece of an airplane uh, was the subject just because I thought it was something that was interesting. And then right here, here you can see the scrapes and the marks that a glacier has left on these rocks as it has scraped over these rocks for a very, very long time. Both of those are examples of how you would use foreground to capture your user's attention and cause them to focus on whatever the subject of your photo or your video is. Now there's another way to use it, and this is probably one of my favorite ways, is sometimes when you take a photo from a certain distance like this one here, it's a nice photo and you get this pleasing out of background. And this, I mean, this is using foreground as uh, something to kind of draw your, your users or your viewers attention to a subject. But then if you take a look at the photo here where I have actual a foreground element that's very close to the camera lens and completely out of focus, it adds a whole new sense of the depth of scale of this location that I was filming in. This is another great example here where I was taking photos of my friend and his airplane, but using the lake, the frozen lake in front of me uh, as something to add a sense of depth to the photo. And using them this way is actually really important when you add, want to add a sense of depth or uh, you want to do parallax shots using drones. So like this right here, you can see the foreground and the background moving and it creates this really intense parallax effect because the only thing that's really not moving, so quote unquote, in the frame is me and my friend in the in the frame here. And this is by no means an exhaustive list of how you can use foreground, but one of my favorite ways to use foreground is to shoot through things. One of the most common things you can shoot through is things like grass, leaves, trees, stuff like that, but it adds this sense of motion and this sense of scale that you really don't get any other way. For example, when you have rocks going right by the camera lens, but they're out of focus and when you have grass cutting in front of the lens like this, but there it's out of focus or you're shooting through tree leaves. It just, it adds so much more interest and so much more dynamic to your videos because you get way more of a sense of motion, which also gives you a sense of scale because you have elements in the frame that are moving and elements that are not moving. Things that aren't moving in the frame generally are seen as very large or very far away and things that are moving in the screen help provide us with that information. Now to get you started, one of the easiest ways to use foreground other than if you're shooting through things, which that can be basically everywhere on the frame, but is to frame your foreground, whether it's in focus or out of focus, on one of the rule of thirds lines, generally like the lower third line or one of the side third line, depending on which way you're moving or how you're framing up your camera. And now it's your turn. So this week, when you go out to shoot, whether you're using your regular camera for photo or video, or you're gonna use a drone, whatever you're gonna shoot with, find something that you can use as your foreground, something that will be your subject in the foreground that will make your viewers want to look at that object or that person and then find foreground that you can shoot through whether that's trees grass leaves uh rocks it doesn't matter what but but Find ways to use foreground in your composition for your photos and your videography this week. And I promise you'll see your photos and your videography improve. Now I put together some other tips and tricks on a, a playlist right over here where you can learn other things like this to improve your videography and photography. They're five minutes or less videos. 
Click or tap there. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.